Welcome back to Everything But Hockey. We've got a couple of very special guests joining us right now. Blake Hara and Chrissy Westman of Paddlecore join us in the studio right now. Guys, thanks for coming out. Welcome. You're thanks welcome. for having thanks us. Thanks for having us. So tell us about your careers as paddlers. You have an, you've competed in the International Dragon Boat Federation. You have international experience and Pan American experience for you as well, Chrissy. How, how has your international careers brought you here today? Also, I... I, uh, so I started as a sprint canoe paddler, mm -hmm. and so in Mississauga, Mississauga Canoe Club, and uh, I did a lot of training there, and, and I, I raced C1 and C2, which is a one-person and two-person canoe, and I had the opportunity to race at the Pan Am Championships, which we were saying, and uh, luckily, Blake came along as a coach of the national team, and he was looking for some dragon boat paddlers, and that just opened up uh, a huge uh, field because at the time that women's canoe was not in the Olympics, it will be in 2020, uh, but this was an opportunity to race internationally I, and, and make a lot of great friends and, and work really hard, so it was, it was amazing. My turn. Uh, I've been involved in dragon boating since about 1990, and up until that point, like Chrissy, I raced sprint canoes. Um, but around 1990, early 90s, uh, that's when dragon boating was becoming really popular in Canada, and there wasn't a lot of expertise in terms of coaching, and that really got me involved in dragon boating, both as a coach and a paddler. And uh, I've coached a lot of national teams over the years. And also, I've been fortunate to start a club in Toronto called Sunnyside Paddling Club. And it's now one of the biggest clubs in North America. And um, it keeps us really busy, in addition to our, uh, our company, Paddle Corps, where we do corporate team building in Dragon Boats, and our newest uh, venture, which is called Gushu, which we're building a software platform for the community. Uh, so, Blake, you've been involved in, in dragon boating almost since I've been alive. <laughs> yeah. uh, Thanks for reminding me of that. <laughs> uh, how, how might the sport have, have changed over that, that time, that 26 years? It, there's been huge changes, and, and it's still evolving. Uh, as The sport's been around for thousands of years, but it's really only in the last 20 or 30 years that it's been considered an international high-performance sport. And so in that time, we've seen a lot of um, adjustments in technique, some evolution in technique but also equipment. Um, we used to race back in the days before the IDBF World Championships. The, the unofficial World Championships were the Hong Kong International Dragon Boat Festival, and we used to compete there. Everybody had the same wooden paddles, same wooden boats, uh, but now when you go to events, uh, carbon fiber paddles are, are the norm, uh, but you do say, still race in the same boats. It's just they're, they're much better boat uh, made out of fiberglass and carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, there's been a ton of changes. And it's really exciting to see because um, the changes are still happening. And it's nice to see coaches that take chances and try to you know, uh, still grow the sport and uh, develop technique. And so it's still happening. Yes, yeah, so we're talking about those changes. You guys were nice enough to bring us a couple of paddles that we can have a look at we here. We did, so, yeah. So this is, is one of your paddles. So this, this paddle actually, we, uh, if, you turn, yeah, if you see the names on it, uh, 1996 Hong Kong, this is the first time ever that a non-Asian team won at the Hong Kong International Dragon Boat Festival and that those guys on that paddle are the guys that helped win the, the medals and some of them are Olympic canoes. Larry Kane's on there, Olympic gold medalist in men's C1, uh, but that was the first time ever that a non-Asian team won. Very cool and, and so this is just like hockey. I'm not <laughs> supposed to mention it on everything but hockey but uh, you got the, the wood kind of shifting to the, the carbon fiber, and this is super light. I know you yeah. guys can't feel it, but... So the big difference is between wood and carbon fiber is, like you said, it's lighter, it's more rigid, they last longer, they're also a lot more expensive, but, uh, I mean, it, it's a, the average price of a carbon fiber paddle is between two and three hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah. Well, now that we can see the big difference between equipment oh, that you mentioned earlier, didn't you also mention that paddlers back in the day would actually whittle their own paddles? Well, that was way back in Hong Kong where some of the races we'd compete in uh, Asia. Mm -hmm. Literally, people would be making the paddles on the dock. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of neat to see. <laughs> now, Chrissy, you started not as, you haven't been in the game as long as Blake, but how have you noticed that the sport of dragon boating has grown? Because we're about 50 million paddlers today. Yeah. Uh, you can see it just down at Sunnyside um, on the beaches. If you look at the university group, it's humongous. Uh, it's really, really nice to see because it brings a competitive side to Dragon Boat. So we've got at least eight, eight or ten teams uh, at Sunnyside, and there's another ten just uh, in Toronto. And, and you, you see how competitive they're getting, and they're incredible, which, which just means that the sport's getting better and better. And uh, down at Sunnyside, there's all these great teams, and they form because of a cause. So we have 
a Dragons of Breast team or we have a teen transplant. Mm. You can make a, a team out of any kind of community group and uh, it's really special so it's really nice to see and it, it's not just about dragon boating it's a it's a lot about friendships and and uh, community so it's, it's great yeah even companies like to do dragon boating events right yeah they love it <laughs> <laughs> it's funny but they're they're very competitive these uh they, they get out of the office and and they bring uh their competitive side mm -hmm. down and the races are, are fun at the end of these events and uh yeah it's a lot of fun so starting out, you were in the boat by yourself and then with one other person, but now yeah. dragon boating involves a lot more people. Yeah. So uh, how has that transition kind of come about and how have you dealt with that? I love team sports. Um, mm -hmm. Even when you're in individual sports, you still rely on your team. So uh, you work hard, but you need training partners and that's what makes you better and better. And uh, so it, it's been a natural uh, pr progress, I guess, because it really is just a part of training and it's just another way to race. And it's, it's amazing to have uh, other girls or, or, or men in the boat that you know have been working so hard and you're, you really pull as hard as you can for each other. Very cool. Now, dragon boating. I think of dragon boating, and I have seen some. Isn't there a lot of artwork that go into the boats as well? There, yeah, the boats, they have intricate designs on the heads and tails. And uh, actually, and there's, there's, a, there's a lot of tradition behind dragon boating. I mean, it's 2,000 years old. It dates back to China. And uh, I mean, there's some p political, philosophical. I, I don't really want to. I can paraphrase, but there there was a <laughs> philosopher, po philosopher poet who was uh, disenchanted with uh, what was happening in his uh, in his government, and really threw himself into the water in protest. And and then the community threw rice in the water and started pounding the drums to keep people away from his body. So that's the tradition of the sport. And still today, at some of the traditional uh, festivals. They dot the eyes on the dragon to wake up the dragons before the event. Um, Buddhist monks would come down and do that. Um, but I, I mean, th there's a lot of variations on dragon boat as well, and, and it's, a lot of it is, has some really neat artwork, uh, whether it's the heads, the tails, the paddles, or the gongs. Some, some boats have 160 people in them, and they have several gongs stationed throughout the boat. So it's, it's a really neat thing to see these boats coming down uh, the different water channels and lakes, and they're in unison. It's just a beautiful thing to see. Now gongs and drums are very prevalent on these dragon boats. Uh, now we can talk about that in our next block, but that's basically the basis of your brand Gushu, right? On your logo on your shirt. We'll talk about that more coming back after the break. Don't go anywhere because you definitely want to hear this. We're back with everything but hockey. Uh, Blake Hara and Chrissy Westman join us once again here and we're talking about Gushu. GoGushu.com is the website. I want to hear all about this great sport organizational tool that you bought online and, and you're going to be launching. So uh, let's hear it. Yeah, we're really excited about it. We want to make that one-stop shop uh, for Dragon Boat. So it, the easiest way to explain what it is, it is, is an online hub, a network, and uh, a tool. So we want to make sure that we connect Dragon Boat seg segments of Dragon Boat, mm -hmm. uh, the community worldwide on uh, one platform. And it, do it doesn't just stop with Dragon Boating. You know, there, there are plans to, to kind of reach out to all sports out there. 
Yeah. Yeah, but right now we're focused on Dragon Boat. It's going to take a, a bit of time to really uh, fine tune it and, and make it uh, as great as it can be for, for Dragon Boat. I think that's why we are so excited about it. It's really niche mm -hmm. for Dragon Boaters, so you can do rosters and lineups. But yeah, there's there's no uh, reason not to expand it to other sports. So if you had to describe Golgushu.com, you would call it almost like a team snap where you can be organized, have team captains, be able to check their rosters, communicate with their teams, but also to include a forum to just have a community and that can t speak with each other and you may not be able to like compete against it, one another or be on the same team but you're tight you're making the community very tight knit absolutely it's it is similar to team team snap in that regard but it's it's all encompassing so mm -hmm. it's not just the teams it's the teams and the event organizers and it's the vendors so people can actually buy dragon boat um, paddles or life jackets because one of the things about dragon boating it's still kind of a niche sport Mm -hmm. So it's there's not a there's not the Dragon Boat store, you know. So you got to go here to get the the butt pads, or you got to go over here to get the gloves, and here to get the paddles. But on Gogushu.com, it's all there. So it, you can get everything at once one spot. You can compare. So it, it's the perfect tool, and if you want to buy your Dragon Boat accessories as well. But then also you can see the events that are out there globally. Um, you can communicate with your team members, like you were saying, Natalie. But also. The, the drum aspect, which you mentioned in the last uh, mm -hmm. segment, uh, Gushu means drummer in Chinese. Um, there's different variations on how you uh, pronounce it. Uh, Gushao, and I'm probably not doing it justice there, but it does mean drummer, and drummer is the heart of the Dragon Ball. And that's why we thought it was a really great name for a company, Gushu. So you guys are starting up a Kickstarter campaign on Indiegogo so people out there can go and donate. What are the biggest challenges that you guys have faced when trying to uh, launch this new initiative? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, it keeps us on our toes. There's every day you're doing a little bit of everything, marketing and finance and, and brainstorming. And, and uh, so a couple of the big things are, are product development. So we work with uh, a company that does a lot of the, the software side, I think, the software building it. So uh, obviously that's a huge expense. So that's why we're on Indiegogo is uh, we're trying to raise some funding for the next phase. We, we've launched a, a phase in April and we're really excited. We have uh, over 100 teams on there and there's over 100 events listed, but there's so many features, all these features that you're, you're hearing us talk about. Uh, we still, there are some that we still need to develop and we want to find out uh, from Dragon Boaters and team captains what they want to see, what the most important features are because uh, what we're learning is you want to do everything right now because you've mm -hmm. got this big vision and uh, we're so excited to get it done but we want to make sure that we're, we're prioritizing the most important things uh, for this season and, and next season. Now what have Dragon Boaters been saying about the idea of Gogushu.com? Dragon Boaters like it um, and in fairness uh, uh, our club Sunnyside Paddling Club has really been a big uh, help to Gushu because we're using it right now uh, for managing a lot of our team scheduling and our team communication and processing waiver forms. And so we've been getting a ton of feedback from the Dragon Boat community in the Toronto area. And while they're, they're, in fairness, there has been some frustration because it's not perfect, but that's why we need to roll it out in phases so that we can gather that feedback and then implement the changes and then we roll it out and it's neat and tidy. And so that's the, the process, all these different iterations that we're rolling the, the software out in, and, and I think it's a better way to do software. It's a better way to build software. So, so how is uh, the promotion being taken care of there? Are you reaching out to other teams out there yeah. and kind of letting them know about your platform? Yeah, we've been actively involved on social media. Um, and our biggest thing is we have a mascot, Gushu the Dragon. Uh, we're considering bringing him in. <laughs> Sounds like a Pokemon. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he's great. He's this big dragon. He's six feet tall, and uh, he's really fun. But he shows up at, at different events, and uh, it's our opportunity to to sort of showcase Gushu and tell people about it, but also help uh, events raise a lot of events. Um, raise money for certain charities, mm -hmm. so Gushu helps do that as well. And he's a drummer, so you, you'll get to hear some good tunes if you find them. Awesome, and that must help with the marketing aspect, but also with the logo. You were, tell you were telling us that you won an award for the symbolism behind the logo. Could you tell us more about it? We didn't win the award. It was actually the the company that in Toronto, Usability Matters. They helped us develop the the logo and actually a lot of the web design that we're going forward with. They helped work with us on that. Um, and then we were sitting down and we we're trying to come up with a, a really great name that 
um, represented what we're trying to accomplish. And uh, we ca they ultimately came up with the word Gushu, and we did some research behind it. And my father-in-law in, is uh, from China, so I ran a lot of the stuff by him, and he said it made a lot of sense. Uh, Gushu means drummer in Chinese, and, and we thought it was really great. So we won an international branding award for the, the branding and the design, so that was great. That's incredible that you took that first step with a very good company that was able to get you noticed that way. But mm -hmm. let's, let's step away from, from the actual marketing aspect. What is it like to be at a Dragon Boat Festival for someone that's never been? Well, I can speak. I was at one <laughs> two days ago. Um, there was one in Toronto. Uh, it wasn't the biggest one around, but it was a really great event in Toronto. Um, there's tons going on. There's usually anywhere from about 50 teams to 100 teams at most events. Uh, some of the big two-day events have upwards of 200 teams. I was in Ottawa a few days ago, a few weeks ago, sorry, and there was 200 plus teams there. Um, and so the, the teams they race on the water. There's heats and semis. There's usually live entertainment at these events as well for the uh, paddlers in between the races. And there's a lot of rival rivalries going on. So uh, there's a lot of uh, you know talk going on between teams um, and, and challenges, and uh, it's really neat to see. And at the end of the day, everybody usually ends up in the beer tent, giving each other high fives, and it's just a really great community uh, to be a part of. The two of you have got to be very excited about the Olympics coming up. So excited. Who should be? Who who should we be on the watch for? Well, actually, one of our uh, our friends and paddlers who actually used to be on on our team Casey um, Frazier she just she just made it in for uh, K2 so definitely check her out uh, with her with her partner Genevieve um, I think the overall paddling continues to yeah. be really strong with older Shaw and Vancouver Den and uh, Casey and I mean it's gonna be a really neat thing to watch this year really right? great guys thank you so much for joining us we're gonna be looking forward to the Olympics we got much more everything but hockey coming up right after the break